The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship with Fairview Presbyterian Church. I know that when you all finally returned to the sanctuary after over a year of virtual services, everybody probably hoped that this would be for good, that things were getting better, that we were all on the road to health and wholeness. And I'm sure that for many of you, it probably feels discouraging to find church going all online again. At the same time, I hope that you have all learned over the past two years how resilient you are, how faithful is our God, and that we are still Christ's church, no matter where or how we gather. A few announcements for the days and weeks ahead. The Monday morning Bible study that was originally scheduled for January 10th has been canceled, and the next Bible study will be on Monday, January 24th. The book club is also postponing its next meeting until February 17th. The deacons are planning a variety of small group gatherings, small group meals for the end of January and early February. And assuming that we all feel safe to proceed by the end of the month, I'm going to encourage you to check the January newsletter and the weekly emails and to please sign up for one of those meals. This is a chance for you and I to get to know one another. So whether you are a newcomer or a long timer, if you are in your pew every Sunday or you haven't been here in a while, if you are a friend of a friend of Fairview Church and you'd like to meet us outside of formal worship, I hope you'll join us for one of those gatherings. And along those lines, if you are not receiving our weekly churchwide emails, but you would like to be, please get in touch with me or with Margo Smith in the office, and we would be happy to add your email. You can call the office, send either of us an email, send us a message through the church Facebook page. However you like to communicate, we will gladly receive it. Now, friends, trusting in God's promises, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us pray. O oh Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, 
that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. Listen carefully to the word of God. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then verses 21 and 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended, descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, in exchange for you because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some of you know that I grew up swimming competitively. So when I was a kid, I, of course, used to go to a lot of swim meets. And my teammates and I would come home kind of like covered in marker or pen ink. Either our coach or one of the parents would write all over our arms which heat and lanes we were in for all of our events so that we wouldn't forget because, of course, we didn't want to miss our race and get disqualified. So the Friday night races might be on one arm and the Saturday races on the other and Sunday races, maybe you'd go to your leg or use a different color. Now, sometimes we had to settle for ballpoint pen or whatever we had on hand, but the best was definitely Sharpie because that lasted so much longer in chlorinated pool water. As we got older, it was always Sharpie especially when we needed to mark our arms and legs for open water events, or some people started doing triathlons, and we swimmers never really said it out loud. But this was almost like a badge of honor because everyone would see that we had done something big this weekend. If the marker stayed on long enough, you might even wind up with a little suntan or, in my case, a sunburn outline that said, 86 or whatever it was after the Sharpie had finally worn off. But eventually we all hit that vein stage, you know, the gotta fit in phase of life. 
and we didn't really want to go out and about with numbers all over our bodies. So we would stand in the shower and scrub and scrub and maybe it would fade a little bit, but it just seemed like it would hang there forever. And then when I finally went to college, I had a roommate who was a biochemistry major. And she and I did a little miniature triathlon one Saturday. And then she taught me the chemical secret. Fingernail polish remover. In case you ever need to know, it will take the Sharpie right off your skin. And all those years, I never knew that. As it turns out, there's really not very much that you can put on your body that can't be changed. Sharpie will come off like that with nail polish remover. Hair color can be changed and changed again. Even tattoos can be removed, albeit through a lengthy and probably expensive process. But there is one thing that is placed on our bodies that is there forever. It can't come off with water or even with fire. It will not fade with chlorine or nail polish remover. It can't be erased by where we go or by mistakes that we might make. Nothing that happens to us and nothing we do to try and either rub it in deeper or scrub it off entirely, we'll change it. When God claims us through the waters of baptism, it is there forever. When Isaiah is speaking to the Israelites, sending them a message from the Lord, Israel has gotten into this big, horrible mess. They are living in captivity, exiled in Babylon, and it's kind of complicated, but they wind up there through a combination of their own mistakes and also as a result of the political systems that were surrounding them. Israel has sinned and strayed from the covenant. And Israel has also fallen victim to Babylon. The temple, which is not just a space for holy worship, but also considered to be God's home, the dwelling place for God, is destroyed. Families are displaced from their homes, and people are starting to wonder, where is God now? Did God come with us all this way to Babylon? Or is God still in Jerusalem and we're out here on our own? Are we still God's chosen family? Even though we're living in a foreign land where we are totally powerless? Does God still love us even though we didn't live up to our end of the covenant. Will God help us care for us even now? And despite the thousands of years and thousands of miles that are between us and the ancient Israelites, we all know that feeling, don't we? Has God come with me all the way to this tragic place? Does God still love me even after the mistakes I have made? Will God still want me to be part of God's family? Should I still even bother to try? And Lord, this pandemic feels like it's never going to end. And not just the virus, but this isolation, this depression, this rise in school shootings and teenage suicide attempts and addiction-related deaths. 
Are you sure you can bring new life out of these ashes? And in the midst of those questions, God's promise is spoken to Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The most dangerous waters will not overwhelm you. Even fire will not consume you. You are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, and I would trade the world to get you back. This is forever. Babylon or whatever powers that be cannot change it. Sin cannot change it. Illness cannot change it. It cannot be washed or burned away. It is true whether our physical sanctuaries stand or crumble. There is no place you can go where God will not go with you. And there is nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. This is the same promise that God gives to us in our baptisms. Today we are remembering and celebrating the day that Jesus himself passed through the waters of baptism. Through it, he was revealed as God's own son and propelled into his ministry on earth. And today we can also remember our own baptisms that through them we are claimed as God's own children and likewise propelled into a life of discipleship. The waters of baptism mark you as God's forever. They are a sign and a seal that you belong to God yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what happens tomorrow, or a year from now, or five years, or 20, or 50, this water, this sign of God's love for you, is forever. So whenever you touch baptismal waters, whenever you see them, or even just think about them, May you hear the words of our Lord saying to you, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. And may these promises carry you, surround you, challenge you and give you life now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.